everyone, this is update for November 1, 2023, day 616 of the war and of the date update. Also catch up for uh, October 30 and 31. Um, I'm going to start with uh, general strategic updates, which is actually just going to be one update, and then I'm going to switch to the situation uh, in Ukraine. Uh, so I... Um, I've been very skeptical in the past about the numbers coming from uh, Russian Statistical Bureau uh, about growth in GDP and, and so on. Uh, they don't seem to be um, to be grounded in reality. Uh, so this is um, um, uh, another sort of data point that sort of goes against um, the narrative of growing GDP and everything is uh, is, is going well in Russia. So the volume of the railroad cargo, which is, as you can imagine, is the basis for the economy. It's a moving of, of sorts, all sorts of goods. And when the economy is booming, it's growing, it's going up. When it's declining, it's going down. So it fell uh, 6% in October relative to October 2022. That's a very significant decline. It's... it's uh, you know, it's not anything mild, and it's just simply, in my view, um, completely undermines uh, idea of um, um, growing GDP. Uh, that doesn't mean that just Russia is having problem with uh, government statistics. It's definitely flawed in pretty much everywhere, in West included. Uh, but um, you know, it's particularly. Uh, flawed in places like Russia, China, and so on. Mm, and again, this is uh, going back to this whole idea of the uh, you know growing prosperity of things are, are blossoming in Russia, uh, and it doesn't look so. Uh, now let's switch um, to Ukraine, uh, and I'm going to talk for a strategic up uh, update um, on a strategic situation in Ukraine. Things are not blossoming in Ukraine either. Uh, I think everyone has uh, seen this uh, article in Time magazine, uh, which is very realistic about the situation in Ukraine. It's actually the uh, first time I'm seeing something that's, uh, I would say, sobering and, and, and again, realistic. Uh, and I would say, in some ways, it's not even realistic enough. Uh, and uh, I think this is... Um, uh, reflection of the things that are going on in Ukraine and what I mentioned is that Ukraine is headed for its 1917 moment um, and then I uh, just want to explain the reason why all of these government uh, bureaucrats are stealing the like there is no tomorrow is simply because they realize that what they are doing lead, is leading to defeat of Ukraine and so they understand that the days are numbered, uh, and so that's why they still like there's no tomorrow. It's a systemic issue. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, obviously Ukrainian political uh, leadership is is incompetent and also involved in all of this. This is where this article um, stays short of actual admission that. Uh, uh, it start everything starts uh, from the very very top from Ukrainian president. Um, you know, there is a saying that uh, uh, fish always rose from the top, and that's very true in this case as well. In most cases, it is true. Uh, and uh, so, uh, as I said before, uh, Ukraine is definitely heading towards its 1917 uh, moment. Things are starting to, uh, in some ways, unravel. Uh, it's in the first, uh, there is psychological change in society. Um, I think there is a, a gradual and slow realization with, with that the current leadership will not will lead to defeat essentially. Uh, it's uh, there is not uh, it's not at the stage yet where um, the society decides to do some actions, but uh, there is a concern that that's that's the best way to describe it. Uh, in terms of the general military situation is uh, Ukrainian command is forced to bring reserves to uh, Avdiivka to be able to keep it. 
um, the the significance of Avdiivka at this point is just is purely political and propaganda wise because the loss of Avdiivka would actually uh, completely collapse narrative that uh, U- Ukraine was um, was successful with the so-called offensive, which I stated many times before, it was complete failure and disaster, uh, and it will actually will sort of show it uh, fully that uh, you know there is a problem, and so uh, the the idea about keeping Avdiivka is really fully um, grounded in propaganda reasons. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, walk through the front line in a clockwise fashion, as I always do, starting from very north. Um, the situation along the state border remains the same. I would say fairly quiet, nothing major going on. Uh, now let's move to the North Luhansk front line. Uh, Russian troops uh, launched some small uh, tactical attacks. Again, uh, they so far they're not leading to anywhere. Uh, so far, Ukrainian forces are able to uh, to stand the ground. Uh, now let's move to uh, North Donbass front line. Uh, northern sector is fairly quiet, as it's always been. Uh, the southern one uh, is, again, Russian small-scale attacks in the areas where they lost ground around Lishivka and Ryivka. They attempting to um, basically regain lost ground. Now let's move to the central and bus front line. Uh, things here are somewhat quieter in terms of Russian attacks. They are sort of more on the so- southern um, uh, shoulder of this uh, of Dievka. Um, salient. Uh, this is sort of in some way temporary. Also uh, Ukrainian command attempted to do some uh, local counter-offensive um, and uh, it, uh, uh, it, it it basically failed spectacularly, uh, leading to loss of equipment. And um, so the main takeaway from all of this is that neither Russian troops nor Ukrainian are capable of uh, true, even, even successful attacks, small-scale attacks. Uh, again, they all turn into sort of peasant armies moves, which are easily defeatable by the opposing parties. So the most successful strategy is to, to stay in defense, in defensive position and bleed out the, oppo- the opponent. Uh, that's really what uh, seems to be working for both Ukrainian side and for the Russian side. And deviation from that strategy is... Um, um, is leading towards sort of negative outcome in the long run because again this is war of attrition it's a long long term situation and um, for Ukraine it's especially critical uh, to ma- to maintain and conserve resources and to inflict much much higher damages than than Ukraine sustaining uh, and so far as I said before it's not happening it's roughly one to one exchange which. Uh, means that every day is bringing Ukraine closer um, towards uh, disaster or defeat. Uh, then uh, there were Russian attacks against Marinka, which as always don't go, don't get anywhere. Now let's move, uh, oh, sorry, just quick check on the situation around Divka. Things remain uh, more or less the same. That's shown here, no essential uh, advances by the Russian troops and Ukrainian uh, so, uh, Ukrainian co- uh, counterattack also failed, so basically status quo remains. Uh, now let's move to the Zaporizhia front line. Things here are getting completely quiet. Uh, there are some small-scale Russian counterattacks here uh, in the area of Rajaini, and then it's fairly quiet uh, around uh, Arikhiv. Nothing major is happening here. Now let's uh, finish uh, with the uh, the front line along Dnipro River. Things here also um, quiet. Ukrainian uh, forces do maintain um, those bridgeheads. Uh, actually, um, 
uh, Ukrainian troops completely control village of Krenka uh, and apparently Russian side does not have uh, resources uh, to uh, eliminate those bridgeheads. That's the only way I can explain it. Um, uh, the, the decision by Ukrainian command not to expand those bridgehead, I also cannot explain. Uh, there is no uh, ver there is no logical explanation to that. Uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.